Our next presentation is entitled uh, Super Super Obese Patients Comparison Between Sleeve Gastrectomy and Ruin Y Gastric Bypass, uh, presented by Dr. Ellie. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for the allowing me to present our experience. <clears throat> Nothing to disclose. So as we know, the management of uh, patients which are um, super obese, more than BMI of 60, is present many challenges. Our difficult patients with a higher more mortality, uh, the weight loss can be questionable sometimes. And as we know, it has increased surgical risk. So which is the ideal operation for these patients? Some background, uh, we see this paper uh, published by the group of uh, Dr. Peter Crooks. Uh, 120 patients with a BMI of 50 they are doing sleeve gastrectomies. And they say that a, the sleeve gastrectomy is a good option for these patients, either as a primary or as a, a two-stage operation. This paper published by Dr. Gagné, which also shows patients with a BMI more than 60, um, shows that the sleeve gastrectomy is, as a five-year uh, follow-up, is a good um, operation as a one step uh, you can see there in the, in the mid, uh, long term, uh, with good results. So this is another paper. I will just go through this. So as you can see, the optimal management is controversial. Uh, Ru and Y and sleep gastrectomy have shown both positive outcomes in this population. But we don't know exactly, because these patients behave in a different way, which will be the ideal operation to offer to these patients. So uh, this a paper, even though it's not randomized, um, it's a control group, but you can see um, later on that uh, it's not much. We uh, retrospective review uh, almost 90 patients in our institution uh, with BMI more than 60 that went either uh, sleep gastrectomy and ruin Y gastric bypass. We analyzed the patient demographics, the uh, comorbidities, and excess weight loss three years, three years after surgery. I don't know if you can see there, but uh, the only difference is the age. Patients with a sleeve gastrectomy were younger, and patients with bypass bypass were um, older, 44 years old. BMI was similar, 65. Comorbidities were also similar, except for diabetes, we prefer to do more gastric bypass than a sleeve gastrectomy, and the rest were similar. This is the uh, preoperative outcomes. Um, we have two complications for the sleeve gastrectomy. Um, one, uh, no complications for the group of the gastric bypass, no more, no more uh, mortality. Of course, the operative time is longer in the bypass compared with the sleeve. And what we see that the length of stay for the gastric bypass is shorter. We see that also in our lower BMI patients. They tend to go home uh, mostly 24 hours after surgery, but the sleeve gastrectomy tends to be uh, longer, especially the higher BMI. When we analyze the uh, weight loss, you can see there in one year, the difference is significant, 43% for the sleeve versus 61 to the gastric bypass. And it peaks at two years where we have almost 70% excess weight loss for the patients with the gastric bypass group and 45% in, in the sleeve group. And then um, as we know, 36 months patients regain some weight, but the bypass keeps at 60% and the, and the sleeve stays the same. So in conclusion, this is a short presentation. The, both the sleeve and gastric bypass showed good outcomes. You can see the difference. It's, it favors the gastric bypass the, uh, in terms of uh, weight loss at three years. But we don't know, you know what happened in the longer follow-up. We, we know that 20% uh, of the patients that under, undergo bariatric surgery either, by, uh, either bypass or sleeve regain weight. In the case of the bypass, we know that there's no um, efficient solution to solve these problems. But the patients that had a sleeve gastrectomy, we can offer either a bypass or a velopancreatic diversion. So, so far I cannot, we don't have a, a conclusion, determining conclusion, but it looks like for patients with a you know, even the, um, higher VMI 60, the bypass is a very good option. You can see we didn't analyze the comorbidities, but in terms of weight loss, it's 20% difference and it's more effective. Thank you. Questions from the audience? I'd like to encourage everybody to use your app, submit questions, save yourself walking all the way to the, all the, way to the uh, microphone. Uh, Samer Matar, you may have mentioned this, and I might have missed it. How did you select 
uh, which group, uh, which operation for each group, where the sicker patients receiving, uh, the more high-risk patients receiving the sleeve compared to the bypass, that might have affected their, their, res their results. Yeah, the, uh, absolutely, you're right. This, that's why the, the value of the paper has some bias. Um, so early on, all the high VMIs were just doing sleeve gastrectomies. Then when we got very comfortable with the gastric bypass, we started expanding uh, that indication. So usually, at the beginning of my experience, everybody was going for a sleeve gastrectomy. And then, mostly for the diabetic patients, you can see that in the, uh, that's one of the differences. Uh, more diabetic patients, I was offering the gastric bypass, and as I got more comfortable with the bypass, I was expanding the indication more and more. Also, the patient select depends on the BMI and if the obesity was central or peripheric uh, in those patients. If they have more central we're doing sleeves, also higher risk patients. So it's not, you know, randomized, it's not match. Uh, so it's kind of uh, a, sh shows a picture of the practice. Um, that's why you can see the differences uh, in, in outcomes. But it looks like, you know, the bypass, even in selected patients that you can match, is superior to the sleeve gastrectomy. So I have a question. It, it looked to me like your, your follow-up beyond one year was about 30% for your ruse yeah. and about 60% for your sleeves. And not surprisingly, it's often the patients that do well that follow up regularly, whether they do well because they follow up or vice versa. But if, if only, you know, if you're missing 70% of yeah. your ruse in long-term follow-up, yeah, it's going to skew your statistics in favor of your root because only the, yeah. the ones doing well are going to come back. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we try to do our best. We created a special clinic for loss of, uh, loss, loss pa the patients that lost follow-up to improve our follow-up. That's one criticism that we have in different papers that we published. Our follow-up uh, is not optimal. Unfortunately, Dr. Um, Rosenthal was showing that at five years, 95% of the patients were lost to follow up. And that's something that we see similar in our institution. And we try to, part of the quality improvement is to improve, increase that follow up. Uh, but unfortunately, this is a retrospective review, and that's what we found in the data. But you're absolutely right. It's difficult to come into conclusions with these numbers. Just uh, out of curiosity, the, um, the difference in the weight loss was significantly higher in the bypass patients, the selection bias aside. Um, you know, compared to the sleeve patients, do you think it's really the selection bias why we saw that big disparity? Or do you have, do you think we should try to do more bypasses in these super obese patients? I think it's a combination, but we, what we see also in, in lower VMIs is that uh, initially the patients that we do gastric bypass, um, they do much better on the sleeve initially. Uh, then both the sleeve and gastric bypass, then some regain weight. But what we see in the, you know, two years follow up, we see superior weight loss in the bypass group, both in the below 60 and above 60. So I think that the, in the short term, the bypass is much better in terms of weight loss than the sleeve gastrectomy. One last question. Why were your sleeve lengths of stay so long? Well, the, in this particular, the, the higher VMI, what we saw is the patients, uh, they are not, um, we cannot take them out of bed easily because they have problems with the ambulation and they have more nausea and vomiting. Um, we, so that thing is the, the, the main issue. We have few patients in that group um, that have a, a long ileus with unknown cause, just, I think just because of the operation, and that affects our length of stay. But um, what we saw over the time that the gastric bypass patients usually have no symptoms of uh, intolerance and they can go home earlier. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you.